Cool. Um, Cole White has uh -huh. sent me stuff. Let me see what he sent me. Sure, definitely. That's probably the closest to you, I would think. I would think so, yeah. stuff look familiar? It does. I mean, we're working on inequalities right now, but I'm well, I'm uh, sure this is more going to be starting. Number, number three is inequalities. Cool. If you have some problems you'd like to read to me I, that are inequality problems, I'd be happy to write them and we can solve. Okay. I actually uh, turned in the homework today, so I don't really have any problems. Let, but, me make, um, let me make one up just to make sure you are in shape on it. That's definitely, yeah. Like a hard one. Cool. Oh, I meant to make that an inequality. It's okay. Well, and we don't want two variables. What am I thinking here? <laughs> That's why I like <clears throat> and let's make this number 12. Cool. So what is the answer to this? And then we also want to graph it. Sure. So the answer would be x is greater than negative 4. When you do, the one difference between solving an equation and solving an equality. You would want to switch the. Um, yes. Only yeah, if you're dividing yeah. or multiplying by, negative by a negative number. Okay. Not yeah. if you're adding or subtracting ever. Yeah. But if you're multiplying or dividing by a negative number, you have to switch the sign. Okay. And it doesn't change anything else. You're still dividing that by negative 3, so you still get negative 4 right there. Yeah. Okay. So X is less. Yeah. Okay. So, and if we're going to graph that, when you graph the, these kind of problems, you graph them on the number line. Right, yeah. So there's minus 4. Mm -hmm. First of all, do I have an open dot or a closed dot? Uh, open because there's not an equal sign under the... And do I go to the than left or sign. the right? Uh, you go to the left. Okay. We did some of these, didn't we? I, I seem to... I believe we did. Yeah, I think we did do these. So, yeah, I think okay, we did. So let's go to these problems over here. Cool. Determine if the ordered pair is a system of, is a solution to the system of equations. The two equations are these. First of all, how do we figure out whether that point 3 comma 4 is a solution to those two equations? Um, so for the above one, we do just replace x with 3 and then y with 4 and then so 4 plus works, 3 is equal to 7, so that, that would be... Now we need all to see if it works for the second one also. Yeah, um, and then so that one would be 3 minus uh, 8, which is negative 5, yeah, so they both work. So that works. Uh -huh. And let's look at the second one. Cool. Well, negative x minus 3 is one equation, y equal 3x plus 10 is another, and uh -huh. is this a solution? Uh, and all of these, you're going to just plug it in. Uh -huh. <laughs> so with the negative 5 and the negative x, won't those just cancel out, so it'd just be 5 minus 3? Yes. Okay, so that would be 5 minus, or, so it would be 2 is equal to 5 minus 3, which is 2, so that one works. So the top one works? Um, and then 2 is equal to negative 15 plus 10, that one doesn't work, so that one wouldn't work. So that's not a solution, so B yeah. is no. Yeah. Okay, now, problem 2 here. Solve the system of equations by graphing. 
Mm -hmm. Let's go through that. Okay. Even though this is a horrible way <laughs> to solve systems of equations, because it depends on you interpreting the number. Uh huh. How would I plot 3x minus 5y equals 2? 3x minus 5y. So if that's, a linear, you don't need, that's a linear equation. It's a straight line. Uh -huh. Right. You'd want to get it in um, slow, or y equals mx plus b format, right? Well, maybe. That's, a good, that's one way to do it. But in this case, it's not the best. In other words, this is in standard format. OK. okay? So okay. I don't really need to worry about slope if I can find two points. Mm -hmm. And I can easily find the y-intercept by making x equal to 0. And I can find the x-intercept by making y equal to 0. OK. Notice that the I mean, y-intercept, no matter where it is, the x-coordinate is 0, right? Uh huh. And the x coordinate, the x intercept, the y coordinate is zero. Uh -huh. So that's a really important thing to remember in algebra, is that y intercepts x is zero, x intercepts y is zero. Okay. So let's put the two intercepts, which is actually quite a bit easier than algebraically transforming this into y equal m x plus b format. Mm -hmm. So, what is the x-intercept? So, we're just do 3x minus y is equal to 2. No, we're going to substitute 0 for y, because that's what y is when we're on the x-intercept. So, okay. substitute 0 for y, and then solve for x. So, it would, so we were just subtract. 3x from both sides, right? Oh, no. If you substitute would... 0 for y, that term goes away. And now I'm going to divide. Always remember you're going to do the inverse of what that number is doing. That number is currently a multiplier. Mm -hmm. So i got to divide both sides by 3 to get rid of it. Okay. That's your x-intercept. So I go down here to the point two-thirds, and I know my um, line goes through that point. Yeah. Now yeah. let's figure out the y-intercept. Well, okay. the y-intercept is where x equals zero. Right. So substitute zero for x and then solve it. Okay, so it'd be two over five for the... Hold on. By substitute 0 for x, Negative. I get minus 5 minus y equals 2. So what's y equal to? So y is, is going to be equal to uh, 2 over negative 5. Negative 2 fifths. Yeah. Notice that it doesn't matter if the negative sign is in front with the numerator <laughs> or with the denominator. They all mean the same thing. Yeah. But what that means is that that point right there at 2 fifths, is mm -hmm. also on the curve, negative two fifths. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. Now to graph that line, is all I got to do is draw a straight line that goes between those two points. Mm -hmm. Notice cool. that I never had to worry about slope. I no. never had to figure out what slope was. Mm -mm. So when you have an equation given to you in standard format like this one. <laughs> to me, the best way to graph it is by just figuring out the x and y intercepts, mm -hmm. connecting those two dots. Okay. Okay. Now, mm -hmm. to answer their question, they wanted us to solve it, the system of equations. Well, y equal 2 looks like what? What's that graph look like? That's just going to be a horizontal uh, line that crosses... Uh, y equals 2. Like this. Yeah. So that's our solution, wherever that ends up being on the graph. Okay. okay. And you can see why this isn't a terribly good method of figuring out <laughs> the solution, because even if I graph this on the grid, 
there's no guarantee that that point's going to cross on one of these corner points. Mm -hmm. So it could be, you know, any kind of number. So yeah. graphing is never the best way to solve these, but it is important to understand that if you graph both equations where they intersect, that X and Y is the solution. Okay. Y is clearly 2, but we yeah. don't know what X is. No. If I wanted to know what X is, I could solve it algebraically. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about that. Tell me how I'm going to solve this algebraically. In other words, I'm going to come up with a precise solution. <clears throat> what am I going to do? Okay, so we, well, if, since y equals 2, so it would be 3x minus 10, uh, y is equal to 2. Not? Or just 10, not, yeah. Just 10. Yeah, in other just words, 10. We're yeah. plugging in. We're going to do this by substitution. Yeah. Okay. Right. Keep going? Cool. Uh, then you would add 10 to both sides, so you get x is equal to 12, x is equal to 4. What's y equal to? Um, and then y would be equal to... Um, oh, <laughs> yeah. y is equal to 2, yeah. Okay. Always okay. look for the obvious. Uh, mm -hmm. Usually, you have to come up with both coordinates, and it's rare mm -hmm. that one of the equations is that. Usually, mm -hmm. you have two equations like this over here. Yeah. Okay. Now, <clears throat> notice on B, uh -huh. we are in Y equal MX plus B format. Uh-huh. So, let's graph it. Again, okay. we'll, we'll follow their instructions, because you may get a question on the test. Okay. It requires you to graph it to come up with the solution. Yeah. Now, <clears throat> I'll graph one in one color and the other in the other. Let's start with okay. the top one. Okay. Let's graph that. So the top one, we would start at negative three. Can you excuse me just one second? My timer's going off. I need to go turn it off. Yeah, definitely. Be back in 30 seconds. Sure. Dad, can you give me some orange juice? That's our time running. Ah, that's timers on your end, isn't it? I, yeah, I was just going to say that. <laughs> I just realized that. When I went down, I'm my sorry. timer was not going off. It's like right when you left, I was like, crap, that's our timer. Oh, what a coincidence. <laughs> Both of our timers are going off on the same time. Yeah. Oh, man, that's funny. <laughs> it is. Okay, <laughs> oh, let's graph this right. pop equation. Okay. Where do I start? All right. Uh, Say so you would start at negative 3. Okay. Um, and then you go down three over two to the right. Okay. Like that. Uh-huh. And then just connect the lines, yeah. Right. When you have two points, you determine the whole line. Now yeah. graph the second one. Uh, so we would start at five. And then go up one and over two to the right. That's the solution right yeah. there, wherever that yeah. is. Yeah. You know, if I had done it on this graph paper over here, I'd be able to give you an answer. Uh-huh. I can't do it on that graph paper, and I can't figure out what the answer is from my approximate graph. That's all right. So yeah. let's solve it the normal way, algebraic. Okay. Okay. How am I going to solve this? So we would um, add three to both, like the top one, right? No, no, there's something very important that you need to see here. Mm -hmm. If I have y is equal to this, uh -huh. and I also have y is equal to this, 
Mm-hmm. What's the next thing I can write? Um. So well, you can just set the same same equation. Y. Yeah, so you can just set them equal to each other. Exactly, and that's a really important thing to realize. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. And now I have one equation with one variable. Mm-hmm. My next step. Uh, so the next step would be well, we could add three to both sides. We could, but you know what I like to do. My first step. Get rid of the fractions. Get rid of denominators. Fractions okay. have denominators. Let's get rid of it. So everything is a whole number. Makes the problem much easier. So what do okay. I need to multiply both sides by? You can multiply both sides by one half. By two, not one oh, half. Oh, because yeah, because they're both the same. I multiply the right side by one half. That turns into one fourth. Mm -hmm. In other words, this variable is being divided by two. That's the same as uh -huh. x over two. Okay. Yeah. So okay. I want to multiply, since the two is a divisor, I want to multiply. I want to do the opposite. So yeah. if I multiply both sides by two, what's the next line? Uh, so if you multiply, okay, so the next, si uh, next side would be uh, negative, yeah, negative 3x minus 3. Uh-uh. Or minus, minus 6, my bad, is equal to uh, 1x plus um, 10, yeah. Okay. Now, even though in general I'm against increasing the size of the numbers, this is so much easier to solve than this. It's not yeah. even close. Exactly. Okay. So always do that. If you can get rid of the denominators, the important thing to realize is that in order to get rid of the two denominator, you have to multiply this term by two, but you also have to multiply this term by two. Yeah. And over here, you have to multiply this term by two and the five by two. Uh-huh. Now what? Yeah. Uh, so now we would do add six to both sides. Okay, it makes that 16 and gets rid of that. Uh -huh. So negative 3x equal to x plus 16. Uh -huh. um, actually, I think I just made it a little more difficult than I No, you that. didn't. You, that's one of the steps, for sure. Okay. Okay. Uh, we but could the also idea see that. is to get all of the x's on one side, all of the numbers on the other. So you got all right. the numbers on the right side. Yeah, so it'd be negative 4x is equal to 16, and then x would be equal to 4. Not 4. Neg negative 4, yeah, my bad. Cool. Now, what's y equal to? Uh, and then y would be equal to? Because they always want you to solve for both variables when you have a system of equations. Yeah. Uh, so y would be equal to? Which one are you going to plug it into? You can plug um, it into either this one or this one. Right, probably the last, second yeah, one. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Always go the easier route. Yeah. So, so it would, yeah. y so it'd be, equal to one half negative four plus five. Mm -hmm. What is that number? Uh, y is equal to negative two plus five. What's that number? Um, and then y would be equal to three. So x is minus 4, y is 3. Yeah. So that's the solution. In other words, if I were to have graphed it, uh -huh. the solution would cross at this point right here. Yeah. <coughs> okay. Cool. Uh, let's see here. B. Uh, let's scroll down. Okay. Yeah, let's look at inequalities. Cool. Now, inequalities are different in the sense that I cannot solve them algebraically very easily. In fact, I no. can't do it. Yeah. I can only solve it graphically. Yeah. Okay. And I'll show you why. Okay. How do we do it graphically? 
how do I handle this first thing? Minus x minus y is less than 4. How do I graph that? Um, Here's where you want to put it in y equal mx plus b format, or y is less than mx plus b. Yeah, so you're just uh, add x to both sides. Okay, so tell but me the next line. Um, and then, so the next line would be negative y is less than uh, 4 minus x, or negative x plus 4. Actually, I'm adding x to both sides, so that's a plus x. Uh-huh. Now what? Uh, then you would divide by negative y. By negative 1, not negative y. Notice that if I divide by negative y, the left side turns into 1. Yeah. I don't want it to turn into 1. I want it to turn into y. Yeah. Okay. okay. In other words, you're always, whenever you're solving these kind of problems, you're always looking to isolate y. You want y yeah. all by itself on one side of the equation. Okay. So the next step is to divide by minus 1. Yeah. That gives me y over here. What's the rest of it? Uh, so it'd be y is equal to, or is uh, less than 4 oh. plus x. I'm dividing by a negative number, so what do I have to do with that sign? Switch the sign. So it'd be oh, y is greater than. Greater than. Greater than what's this? Negative 4. It's actually negative, negative 4 minus x. Min yeah. Let's write it like this. In other words, I want to write it in as close to y equal mx plus b format as I can. Okay. Okay. Now, let's graph that. Okay. Where do I start? Um, so you would start at negative 4. Okay. And then just go down 1 over 1 uh, to the right. A negative slope. Yeah. And is that a dotted line or a solid line? Uh, that would be a uh, dotted line. Because it's just greater than. It's not yeah. greater than not equal. equal to. If it was greater than, in other words, if I had that under there, it would be a solid line. That would be solid, That's yeah. the difference. Okay. Now, yeah. which side of that do I shade? Uh, you would shade the... The left side, right, since it's greater than? You know what? Don't ever use the words left or right. Okay. Because y is a vertical measurement. Mm -hmm. So we only look at the y-axis. Okay. Y is greater than that line. So which side do we shade, up or down? Uh, up. Correct. And that's all you need to care about. Okay. Don't if you confuse it with right and left, it's going to really mess you up. Yeah. Okay. So as long okay. as y is always on the left side of that inequality, it's mm -hmm. only the y-axis. Is all I have to do is find the y-axis and find any point that's greater than that line. That okay. Tells me the side to shade. Yeah. Now, here's the secret. <laughs> I'm going to shade this with horizontal lines. Okay. Okay, so... That's everything above that line. Now, right. I know it also looks like it's to the right, but don't think in terms of right or left. Think above or below. Okay. Okay. Now, okay. the second equation inequality is 2x minus 3y is greater than or equal to 3. Mm -hmm. Now, this looks a little like the equation, and if it was an equation, I would say let's graph it by plotting the x and y coordinates, or mm -hmm. the x and y intercepts, rather, and just connecting the dots. Unfortunately, yeah. if we do that with an inequality, we don't know which side of the thing to shade. Uh -huh. So the only really good way to do this is by putting it into y is greater than or equal or less than or equal to mx plus b. So yeah. let's convert this. So what's the first thing to do? So let's see here. So we can subtract 2x from both sides. 
Okay, so that leaves y is greater than or equal. It doesn't switch it by whenever you subtract. Yeah. It only switches it when you divide or multiply. Uh -huh. What's the next line? Um, the, the next line would be you would divide it by negative 3. The next line. So it would be, so it'd be y is uh, less than or equal to um, negative 2 thirds x. Hold on. Divide two -thirds negative x 2 by negative 3. What is that? Uh, positive 2 thirds um, What's x good? plus minus 3. Not three. You got to divide this term also by minus three. So it'd just be plus one. Minus one. Minus one. Yeah. My bad. Why? I'm. I'm. I have a plus three divided by minus three. Yeah. That's minus one. Yeah. Okay. So now we can graph that, and we know which side to shade. Uh huh. So let's graph it. We're always stuck. Okay. Uh, negative this, 1. This is minus 4. So, okay, we'll call this minus 1. Cool. And then you'd go up 2 over 3 to the right. So, we'll call that that point right there. Connect okay. the 2. Which side of that line do I shade? Up or down? Uh, down. So, I'm going to use vertical lines this time. Mm -hmm. And now my solution set lies in the area where I have both vertical and horizontal lines, uh -huh. which is this area right here. Mm -hmm. Now, can you see why that would be tough to describe algebraically? In other mm -hmm. words, when I said we, we usually only can get this solution by graphing, it's because how would you describe this area algebraically? It would be very, very difficult. Mm -hmm. I, I'm not sure how I could do it. I mean, I, you yeah. could give me five hours and I wouldn't be able to figure out how to do it. Because yeah. it's an area, first of all. It's not just, mm -hmm. you know, x greater than five or anything like that. It's uh -huh. an area on the xy plane, so it's extremely difficult to describe algebraically. The best way to do it is with these two equations. Yeah. In other words, that really is the answer to the algebraic solution. Mm -hmm. I don't know right. any simpler answer that describes this area right here. Me neither, yeah. You know, other than graphic. Graphically, mm -hmm. graphically it's really easy to, to see that area. And this is uh -huh. still a solid line, and this is still a dotted line. Yeah. Oh, it has a lot of meaning graphically. How uh -huh. you would translate that to an, uh, an algebraic expression, the only thing I know is these two equa inequalities right here. Uh, yeah. I don't know of any other way to do it, to be honest. Yeah, I don't either. So. Yeah. All right. Um, let's... We've, we've done one graphing of inequalities. We're going to do B the same way we did A. Okay. We are going to put them in Y, not equal, but a Y is less than or greater than MX plus B. Uh -huh. And then that allows us to draw the line and shade the side. Okay. We're going to do it for both. And wherever we have shading in the same area, that's our solution set. Okay. 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 So let's do something a little bit probably more likely that you'll be tested on, which, yeah. which is systems of equations. Mm -hmm. Now this one they say solve by substitution. And the reason they okay. say that is because one of the equations is fully solved for one variable. Yeah. So substitution is relatively easy. Yeah. I prefer elimination, but elimination really only works when both equations are in standard format. These are yeah. not in standard format. This is in y equal mx plus b, and this is in standard format. Uh-huh. Okay. 
So okay. what's the next step in this solution? Uh, so the next step would be, well, my voice is correct. <laughs> um, right. My voice will go out before you. You're my fourth, <laughs> fourth hour today, and I had four and a half hours yesterday. Oh, man, I'm sorry. No, no, That's apologize. It's good. I love it. Good, good. That's a long day, too. Yeah, my Tuesdays and thir uh, Tuesdays and Wednesdays tend to be my big days. Nice. Unfortunately, I mean, every other day has almost nothing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's a very That's seasonal. Awesome. It's a seasonal business. It's not just uh, October, or September through June. It's exactly. All like Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, exactly. So what am I going to do to solve this by substitution? By substitution, um, let's see here. So for the, we get subtra or, um, substitute negative 3x in place of the one above. Well, I'm going to substitute that wherever I see y in the one above. Yeah. That's what substitution does. And okay. I'm going to put it in parentheses, always. Mm -hmm. So in place of y, I'm going to write 12 minus 3x. Okay. Now that gives me an equation that only has one variable. Yeah. I can solve that. Let's solve it. Okay. Step by step. Um, okay. Uh, so it'd be 2x. Uh, plus 24 minus 6x is equal to 4. Next step. Um, and then the next step would be the combined two variables. So it would be negative 4x plus 24 is equal to 4. Next step. Uh, subtract 24 from both sides. And then it would be negative 4x is equal to negative 20. Then x is equal to 5. Okay. And what's y equal to? Um, and then y would be equal to... Um, let which, me see which equation are you going to use? The bottom one. Yeah, the easiest one. Mm -hmm. So y equals... Five. So it'd be 5 is equal minus to... Minus 3 12. times 5. Yeah. Well, it's 12 minus 15, that's minus 3. Yeah, so, so y is equal to minus yeah, 3. that's the solution. Yeah. And that's what you would have to put down here, is both okay. solutions. Always, never forget to solve for y. A lot okay. of people will make the mistake of solving for x and think they're done. Uh-huh. You always need both variables. When you have two equations and two variables, you need to solve for both of them. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, let's do one more by substitution, and then we'll do by elimination the next two. Okay. Now this a little harder to do by substitution mm -hmm. because we don't have one of the variables completely solved for. Yeah. So what's the first thing we're going to do here? Uh, so the first thing we're going to do is substitute not x yet. plus 7. In, we don't uh, have yet. an x. We have an x plus yeah. 7. Let's solve that for x. Okay. So we would, uh, x would be equal to 3, negative 3. Now we have one equation completely solved for one variable, and we can do substitution. Yeah. So tell me what the top, I'm going to substitute into the top equation. Let's do it step by step. Okay. Tell me the first line. Don't, don't um, do two steps at once. Just tell me the first line of the first step. Okay. So it'd be negative two times negative three. So it'd be uh, yeah. No, just keep going. Uh, we'll plus nine one. Later. Okay. Is equal to fifteen. Okay. Now let's start simplifying it. Okay. So it'd be uh, six plus nine y is equal to fifteen. Next line. Um, and then we would subtract 6 from both sides. Um, and then just divide by 9y. So you get y is equal to 1. Not divide by 9y, divide by 9. Just 9, yeah. We're always trying to isolate the y. We don't want to get rid of it. 
I divide uh -huh. by 9y, the left side would say 1. Yeah. So I want to divide always by the coefficient only. Okay. So y is equal to 1. We already solved for x. Uh -huh. We know both solutions now. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Now let's talk about solving by elimination. Okay. Elimination is exactly what it sounds like. I uh -huh. want to either add or subtract equations mm -hmm. in order to eliminate one of the variables. Okay. Well, clearly, if I add these two, nothing gets eliminated. If I subtract them, nothing gets eliminated. No. So what can I do to one of the equations before adding and subtracting it? I'm always allowed to multiply both sides by the same number. So I can yeah. take equation 2 and modify it into what? Mm -hmm. What would I do to modify it? And I'm going to call the modification still equation 2 because it'll be the same as this. Okay. What am I going to do to it? Um, so for this one, oh, let me try it. So we know... Well, they're both equal to y, right? Well, no, hold on. No, they're not. Or they're just, okay. They're both in standard format. And that okay. is frequently a key that you want to use elimination. Standard yeah. Standard format is where you have the x on the left side followed by the y on the left side equal to some number. Okay. So whenever you have standard format, think elimination. Okay. But how am I going to eliminate it? I, I can add equations or I can subtract equations. Uh huh. Well, what if this was a plus 6y? A plus? Yeah. yeah. If that was a yeah. plus 6y, then I'd be able to add it and y would disappear. Uh huh. So how do I make yeah. this a plus 6y? What do I have to multiply equation number 2 by to get that to be plus 6y? Uh, times 3y. Not 3y. Or just 3, yeah. I'm multiplying both sides by 3. You're allowed to do anything you want to one side of an equation as long as you do it to another. So yeah. what's my new equation number 2? Um, so it would be 15x plus 6y uh, is equal to 47. 57. 57. Okay. Yeah. Now, that's okay. no longer my equation 2 that I want to use. Mm -hmm. I want to use the new equation 2. I didn't give it a, a new number because it's the same equation as the one before it. Because uh -huh. all I did was multiply both sides by 3, but it's the same equation. Yeah. You see that? In other words, uh -huh. this equation is really the same as this equation times 3. That's all it is. So okay. now I can add equations one and two. The, okay. The new two. Okay. What do I get when I add them together? Uh, so you get 22x is equal to 57. 57 plus 9. Yeah. You have plus to add nine. the right sides also. Uh-huh. Okay. Now x is equal to? Uh, so x would be equal to 3? 33. No, no just, just 3. three. Yeah. Three, just times, three, yeah. 3 times 22 is 66. Yeah. Now, to solve for y, which equation am I going to use? Uh, probably the top one. Well, all right. That, there's nothing wrong with that. The top one has pretty small numbers also. But you could use the original second equation if uh -huh. I wanted to. In uh -huh. other words, this has smaller coefficients. There's no negative signs. So I can yeah. think of some good reasons why it would be easier to use this middle equation. We're not going to use that one for sure. No, that one's the hardest one. Right, but we can use this middle one. So how do okay. I solve for y? Uh, so to solve for y, you just plug in x, so it would be 15x nope. plus 5 no. times 3. 
So just 15. Just 15. Okay. In other words, I'm substituting 3 for x. Yeah. So I lose the x. Yeah. Okay. 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 Now solve that. Okay. So now it would just be, um, yeah. So just so 15 plus 2y is equal to 19. So then you uh, subtract 15 from both sides. Okay. So 2y equals? Is equal to 3. 4, my bad. Y equals? Uh, to 2. There's your two solutions. Cool. Let's do another one of those. Okay. Before you start your problem, Okay. Oh, yeah, Mr. Count. Could we do just this problem and then uh, just uh, that for the night? Because I've I have a lot of other homework. Oh, sure. Sure. Uh, okay. We, we only okay. have like 15 minutes to go anyway. Okay. Cool. This is different. Okay. This is equation one. This is equation two. Mm -hmm. Notice that there's no single thing I can multiply either equation by mm -hmm. to make the coefficients the same. I don't want to get into yeah. fractions. Fractions mm -hmm. will merely complicate things. Yeah. But I can multiply equation 1 by something and equation 2 by something else. Mm -hmm. So what would I do? How am I going to get these coefficients to be the same? Well, what, what could I multiply equation 1 by and equation 2 by to eliminate one of these variables? Um, this is a minus sign right here. Okay. Uh, let's see. We could do 10. Do the smallest. Okay. So 10 wouldn't do, do it. I mean, no. it depends. If you multiply both of them by 10, that doesn't help. Yeah. Um, Remember probably... my objective. My objective is to come up with two new equations that have the same coefficients on one of these variables. That's all. Okay. What if I multiply the top by 3 and the bottom by 4? Oh, okay. Yeah, that works. Multiply work. the top by 3. What do you get? Um, so you get 12x plus 15y is equal to 3? Not 3. Got to multiply uh, both sides. Nine. In other words, I can't fool with just the left side. I'm changing that equation if I do that. But if yeah. I multiply both sides by 3, then this equation 1 is the same as this equation 1. Yeah. And what do I want to multiply equation 2 by? Uh, you don't want to multiply that by, we're doing 4, so it would be negative 12x um, plus 8y is equal to 76. Four times that, four times 30 is 120, plus 32, it's 152. Uh -huh. Okay. So now, I've got two equations, which if I add together... Big plus mm -hmm. sign right there. Uh -huh. What do I get? Uh, so now... Notice oh, that so I'm eliminating yeah, a variable. That's the yeah, so. point, is to try to eliminate one variable. Exactly. Exactly. So now I just have uh, 23y is equal to 161. Yeah, and that's got to be 7. Yeah. Y equals 7. Yeah. And then you can solve for X by going into whichever you consider the simplest of the four equations you're looking at. It's almost yeah. never one of these because those all have uh -huh. bigger numbers. Yeah, exactly. So the one I would use is this one right there. Y, uh -huh. everything's got a plus sign. The biggest number is 5. In this equation here, the biggest number is 38. Yeah. And there's a negative sign. So I'll okay. choose the simplest equation to solve for the other variable. Okay. Okay. 
Cool. And I will let you go at three quarters okay. of a session. Okay, that sounds good. But you're doing good on this. You remember, yeah, definitely. You're, you're remembering your algebra pretty good. Thank you. Yeah. All right, Dylan. Have a good one and good luck with your arduous schedule this weekend. <laughs> I will.